region, both Cape and Jackson area, are blessed to have a lot of great schools, both public and private. And, uh, you know, great schools make great communities. And so I, I commend student, your, the students that are here with us today on, on their accomplishments. Uh, with regard to, uh, to Ron and Connie, uh, actually I have been on vacation with Connie and, and you can ask me questions about that later. Uh, Ron, uh, I, I would just say that uh, I can't even bring myself to wear red even on Valentine's Day. So, uh, no, I, I worked with Ron for a long time. A uh, great school leader, uh, was a, a great mentor to me, and, and still a close friend, and I call him often, actually. Uh, we rode to Jeff City together earlier in the week, so. Also have with me Mr. Neil Glass, I mentioned earlier, Assistant Superintendent, uh, Administrative Services. Actually the lead on the bond issue, which I'm going to talk about, uh, the construction that's happened over the last three years. Uh, he's just done a fantastic job for the school district and, and taking the leadership uh, to make get these projects completed. and. I'm going to spend most of my time talking about um, the completion of the bond issue. I do have a, a few other comments I'd like to make uh, as long as I stay on time here. Um, but if, if you may recall, about three years ago, we made the circuit, Neil and I did, uh, trying to promote a bond issue. And it's hard to believe that it was three years ago uh, because we talked to a lot of different groups. And of course, the voters approved that bond issue in April of 2010. $40 million uh, was a no tax rate increase bond issue uh, that we were able to do some things with our facilities. And I want to just run through those kind of quickly. I've got a whole bunch of pictures. Let me get... Where's Connie? <laughs> not, not wrong pictures. We can, we can show those later. Uh, this is uh, Alma Schroeder. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do with our buildings, uh, particularly many of our elementary buildings, was to, to really identify the entrance and bring the office area out to the entrance and then provide some additional security. So you'll notice the, the enhanced, uh, and go ahead, Neil, uh, the enhanced entrance there where I'm gonna talk about the door system here in a little bit, but um, we brought the office out towards the front. The building that you can see right here uh, is the new music classroom. And then we also added some classroom space down on the, the far end, which is uh, to the left, um, where we needed some additional space. Alma Schroeder is basically our largest elementary, and so we needed some additional space in that building. One of the things we, we did at all the elementaries was to provide a double set of doors uh, for security purposes. It, you can come through the first set of doors, but you can't come through the second set without being buzzed in. Uh, and, and we have for those of us uh, staff, have a swipe card then that we can swipe in. But uh, someone, if they visit the building, will come through the first set of doors. There's a office on the right that we moved out close to that area so that uh, they can be buzzed in for additional security. Uh, there it shows the, the office. We brought, again, the office used to be kind of farther back in the building and we brought it out to the front so that we could uh, uh, watch who comes in and out. Here is the uh, new hallway. Uh, the office used to be on the left, now it's part of that new construction that is on the right. Uh, here's a classroom at the far end that uh, we added. Uh, one of the, some of the other things that we did to this building, and actually several of our buildings, was to provide new roofs, new HVAC. Uh, we had some really bad water problems. Uh, of course, only when it rained, but there were still problems uh, in some of the buildings. This is Jefferson Elementary. Uh, it's a mirror image of Alma Schroeder. So we did the same thing, built a new entrance, put the security doors in the front, uh, handicapped accessible up to the front. Um, there's the mu new music room. Uh, one of the things we had to do is the, there was a corner of the floor in the gymnasium that sank about six to eight inches. Uh, of course, all the balls rolled to that side, you know, when the, but anyway, uh, we did tear up the floor and put a new floor in. Uh, this particular building is Blanchard. Uh, we really didn't do a lot in terms of the bond issue with Blanchard at first. Uh, however, Blanchard had a fire last year, if you may recall, and the building was closed for some time. So we had to go in and do some renovations due to the fire. We also then went in and put in the door system uh, for security. And again, people can come through the first door, but they have to be buzzed through the second door. And that, of course, rearranged the office area and everything for that. This is Clippert Elementary. 
Um, this is one of those buildings I always had a hard time, you know, when I I'd, I'd get lost in there and you'd have a hard time finding the entrance and where the office was and everything else. Uh, so one of the things we did here was to bring the office out front and put a, uh, locate an entrance so that people know where to go in the entrance. We also added a library edition and a classroom edition because again, we needed space here and you'll see the inside of the library as well as the computer lab. Um, but this, this kind of brought this building up in terms of size so that we could handle uh, the number of students. And the, here again is the entryway for that building. The uh, one elementary that we built basically from scratch, we, we uh, had a, uh, the old Franklin Elementary was built in the 20s. And so uh, we actually tore it down and built, well we built a new building and then tore it down. If you'll notice up on top, go back one real quick if you can. Up on top is the cupola. You remember the old Franklin Elementary had a cupola up on top? Uh, it's that green and white thing. Um, we actually uh, wanted to incorporate that into the new building. Uh, it was, we weren't able to take the old one off and transfer it just because it, was, it would fall apart. <laughs> um, but uh, we actually found the company that built the first one and they still had the plans. Uh, and so they built us another one and we put it on the new building. But this is a beautiful uh, elementary, and if you get a chance, you need to go by and see it. We were really pleased with the architecture that, uh, uh, and the construction of the facility. Um, and we've got a bunch of pictures of it, so I'm going to just keep rolling. Here's the library. If you notice on the far right, you can kind of see the, right over here, that is the old door mantle out of the old building. The, the stone mantle that went around the front door. They did a a recessed or a sunken area here where students can sit and like for a reading nook or whatever and put that at the end and put, made a bookcase out of it. So it's really neat. Part of the, uh, again, the library and the building, you'll notice that they, they use what they call clouds in the ceiling just for an additional kind of a, a, a nice uh, atmosphere in the room. Uh, we have cubbies, there, there are all kinds of neat things in this building. Uh, lots of color, um, classroom facility. One of the things I was going to talk about, back up one real quick, we, we also wanted to put the latest technology in this building. So uh, you'll notice that uh, on the side here, I think is uh, what's called the Promethean board. Uh, some of the latest touchscreen technology as far as instruction. The cafeteria, and the neat thing about the cafeteria is it has a stage area that actually opens up into the next picture opens up into the gymnasium. So uh, it was a neat feature that they were able to add. Uh, again, it is a two-story building, and so we do have an elevator and uh, steps, obviously. But one of the things they did, too, is they made these little areas off to the side of the hall where teachers could pull students out and work with small groups, um, either like for reading or whatever. Um, here's a, well, here's a middle school. I'm sorry, yeah, middle school. Uh, one of the things about the middle school, again, the office was kind of inside and uh, it was kind of hard to figure out where to go in. And so one of the things we did is this area up here was already there, the, the crosswalk. We closed it in underneath and brought the office out front, again, for increased security. And if you go on, you'll see that, again, this is one of those places you can come through the first set of doors, but you can't get any further than that without being buzzed in. Just another picture of that. Uh, the junior high, uh, we built a library, uh, which again, uh, we're just really pleased with the architecture in this. And uh, it was dedicated as the Lewis Lorimer Library. We actually used some of the funds that uh, we had from a trust from Lewis Lorimer uh, from the sale of Schultz building years ago. And so this is a beautiful facility. Uh, we had a dedication, that was, that was the picture a while ago. Um, lots of natural lighting in this building. Uh, it's really a neat atmosphere inside. Just uh, going through here real quick. It's got a computer lab in it. Of course, we have tigers everywhere. Uh, this is Libby Wilson, and she's happy. Uh, she's a librarian there, and she actually helped design a lot of things that went into this library. Uh, and even I think they even named a line of furniture after her because she helped design some new furniture. And so the company that uh, sold us the furniture named a, a line of furniture after. And of course, the, one of the first projects that, and we've used this a few times, 
uh, is the stadium, Tiger Stadium, and we're really proud of this. It's a turf field. Uh, the stadium will seat about 5,000, and uh, I think I'm going to show you the first picture here in a little bit. It doesn't show the new scoreboard. These pictures were taken before the scoreboard was up. Also, the foundation and the booster club helped us out. This is actually a picture of that first game, and I'm happy to say we did win that game by one point. Uh, it's 21 to 20 against Festus, but this was taken from a ladder truck. Um, I think the fire department had there, but uh, that was uh, quite an exciting time for us to finally have a football stadium, which we'd never had. Uh, the neat thing about, of course, having a turf field is that we can, we can have multiple games and activities on it uh, in a single day and never wear it out. Um, and so we, I know we've had soccer. Um, we even had cross-country meets that, that ended in the stadium there. This is the uh, latest project that we've had, and it is the Richard D. Kinder Performance Hall. Um, and uh, actually, the Kinder Foundation um, provided some funding for this uh, facility, at least for part of it. And it will seat just a little over 1,000, right, Neil? It's a little over 1,000 seats, a beautiful facility. Uh, it does have a balcony. Uh, this is a picture from the balcony uh, during construction, I believe. Uh, it's got a, in the lobby area, it's got a place that you can display art and um, just a nice big lobby. It does have an orchestra pit. Um, I couldn't believe how deep that thing is. Uh, we're looking down from the top. It does have to have a net over it, of course, or, so people don't fall in. It also has a cover that you can put over it, of course, when you're not using it. Uh, the other thing that we did at the high school was to um, build a classroom addition on the south end of the building. Uh, 22 classrooms, basically. Um, we, we had had really a problem at the high school in terms of having enough space. We had teachers on carts going around different places. And so uh, we're real excited to have, matter of fact, I think if you ask Dr. Cowan, this is probably one of the things he's more excited about than anything because he, he's got enough classroom space. But uh, it makes the halls really long. Uh, you'd almost want to get a skateboard or something to go down the halls. But uh, it's just a fabulous uh, facility, computer lab. And of course, you know, we want to thank <laughs> all the patrons, uh, voters of uh, Cape Girardeau uh, for allow approving the bond issue and allowing us to do the, uh, these improvements. Uh, you know, I, I'm really excited about having this completed and uh, knowing that our facilities are really uh, up to the standard that they are. Uh, and of course, you know, we're, we're constantly looking to, to see what we need to do next, but we're really pleased with where we're at and what we were able to do with our facilities both in terms of, of space, in terms of safety, in terms of uh, deferred maintenance that we had needed to do on some of the buildings. And I think uh, you can be very proud of the, uh, what we were able to, uh, to accomplish. Real quick, before I go on to the, the next, are there any questions about the bond issue or the, uh, the facilities? Might be a good time to just kind of stop. And uh, in education terms, we call this, uh, what, formative assessment, right, Neil? This is where we check for comprehension. <laughs> Jim, let me ask you a question about how your tax revenue has rolled in to, to help pay on the bonds for the last three years. How are you doing on that? Good? Well, right. Uh, we were really uh, in a good position in terms of uh, the timing as far as the, the bond issues because the interest rate was very low. We were able to use uh, some of the uh, federal bonds, the um, uh, stabilization bonds, uh, qualified school construction bonds, the Build America bonds. There was there was just a lot of different opportunities, and and actually uh, we got some really good rates on that. So it was, the timing of that was really good. Uh, of course, we did not have to increase our tax rate in uh, above what it was previously to to fund this, and uh, it's it's really I think worked out well for us, and I think we're doing real well in terms of, the, of that part of it. Yes. You know, we had a lot of discussion about that in the beginning as far as whether we wanted to build them uh, to a FEMA standard. Um, and what we found out is it was going to cost so much that even the additional revenue that we could get to do that um, would really wouldn't pay off. Um, the buildings are, are constructed to the point where they meet you know, seismic and uh, normal standards, but in terms of being, uh, having the extra FEMA, FEMA standard, they do not. 
Um, we're certainly always concerned about uh, things like tornadoes and, and uh, uh, earthquakes and things, but um, we didn't build them to that extra standard. It was just going to be really expensive. A good question. We had a lot of discussion about that in the beginning. Okay, good. Well, again, uh, you know, we appreciate so much in terms of the community supporting uh, this initiative because I think the, the infrastructure of the school is so important not only to the school district but to the community. Uh, I think you can be proud of what we've been able to do as far as Cape Public Schools and the, the facilities that we have, and I think that that should really uh, move us forward into the future. We do, of course, now we're, we're getting uh, ready to update our facility plan and, and see what's next. We do have some things that we still need to look at. Uh, the junior high school is getting, getting pretty old, and we need to, of course, what used to be the high school, and we need to look at doing some, uh, some things to it to bring it up to standard. Uh, we're always looking at uh, you know, whether or not we need to add some space at the Career and Technology Center. You know, we've got so many things going on out there, uh, along with the Partnership for Higher Education and, and the uh, adult programs that we have out there. So we're, we're looking at what our needs are at, at the uh, CTC as well. Uh, how many years are you covered ahead of to be able to take care for the incoming students which will go to school in six or eight or ten years? Or in terms of growth? Yes. You know, uh, we had planned, of course, that uh, this would, would take care of us for a while, and, and I think, uh, you know, it, it will for a while. Uh, however, and particularly one of our elementaries is, is, is already maxed out. Um, we, have, we have some space, and we, it should take us out uh, for a period of years, but, uh, you know, we, we have had some growth in the last several years, uh, and so we'll just have to keep monitoring that. But I think we should be all right for a little while. A good question. What kind of security do you have in the schools now? Well, we have, in terms of all the elementaries, middle school, junior high, we have, like I said, the, the door locks where you can come through the first set of doors, but you can't come through the second set of doors. All other doors are alarmed. So if somebody goes out a door without a swipe card, uh, it's going to set off an alarm. And I know this from experience. <laughs> um, I, I was at Clifford one day and you know, you just don't, I wasn't used to it, and sure enough, I set the alarm off. Um, and so we also have security cameras uh, throughout the buildings, um, but uh, the one thing that we really wanted to do, particularly with the bond issue, was to bring our office area out front, put double sets of doors, and alarm the doors. Uh, I think that's, that was a big, big move and uh, will really help us in terms of safety. When you say you brought the office in the front, so do you have a kind of a security uh, glass there or so for the people who works in the office? No, and, and actually this was something else we kind of talked about. Um, basically, it's just regular glass at this point. And uh, I think that was a suggestion made by some folks in terms of making that some type of security glass. Of course, as you get into that, then you, you again start running into expense and things, and then you try to figure out where do you start and where do you stop because we have glass all the way around, you know, the building, but um, that was something that was, was talked about. But at this time, it's just regular glass, I believe. So, yes? You, you mentioned the partnership uh, for higher education. Did, how much space is that taking, and how much additional revenue are you saying? Or where is the, the additional revenue coming from? We, we do get some, uh, some rent from uh, the university for that space. And, and I can't give you the exact amount. I believe they're using like three or four classrooms um, uh, out there right now. Uh, that has grown in terms of the number of students that have participated in. A lot, a lot of people don't realize what that is. The Partnership for Higher Education is uh, a, a kind of a joint effort between uh, Southeast Missouri State University, Three Rivers Community College, <laughs> and Middle Area College uh, to provide uh, classes uh, at our Career and Technology Center. And a student can go there, basically, and get a two-year degree or get a transfer degree to go on then to a four-year degree. Uh, and they call it the Partnership for Higher Education. One of the things we've talked about is we really need a different name so people can identify you know, what it is. But it's, uh, it is a place where uh, students can go to, uh, and they can use their A-plus uh, 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 certificate there. If they qualify at A-plus in an A-plus school like Jackson or, or Cape, they can use that at the partnership. So it's a, you're, 
what you're receiving is a flat rate. It's not. Uh, we don't get any of the. We, we no. We do not profit from the tuition or anything like that. We're just we're just providing space. So. I uh, wanted to talk just a little bit about uh, some other things that we're doing. And uh, by the way, before I, before I do that, I, I want to again thank uh, our club, our Rotary Club, for their support. One of the things that was mentioned a while ago is the Read to Succeed program. And where volunteers come into the elementary and, and they work one-on-one -on -one with either kindergarten or first graders and, and help them read. It's a, it's a program that uh, was put in place with the help of United Way and um, it, it follows a curriculum and everything and then uh, we also got a grant AmeriCorps grant grant to help us with it uh, and we have it at every all of our elementaries I believe it's also at Jackson um, and it's amazing what that program does and, and reading at that level is so important we have to get those kids reading uh, so that they're up to grade level reading by third grade um, you know, there's statistics that show that there, uh, you, can, you can do a correlation between uh, students that are behind at third grade and the uh, number of students in, or number of people later on in prison um, because it's so important. Uh, and so I appreciate those of you that volunteer for that program. You know, I talk to teachers after those students come back and they talk about how great it is to have those students uh, and, and how advanced they are in terms of their reading, how much it helps them. So uh, I know that it really works, so I appreciate uh, the support there. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at doing, uh, we're actually not looking at, we've, the board al already has approved this. Uh, it's called one-to-one -one initiative. It is where we provide a computer device for every student, and then we change instruction in the class to incorporate that computer device. So that the student would be working with a computer in class, they would take that, uh, that computer or computer device, whatever you, whatever you call it, tablet, whatever, they would take it home with them, uh, do their homework on it or do their preparation for the next day on it, uh, and uh, then come back to, to school with it the next day. Um, we will be providing professional development for our teachers because it really is a change in terms of the way that instruction is done. Um, it's, we're planning to start with high school students January 2014. Uh, at least that's the plan for right now. Uh, we would phase into the junior high and middle schools in the following years, and we possibly, if things work well, we could even take it into the upper elementaries uh, following that. But uh, uh, this is something we're kind of excited about. If you think about where students live, and they live in a technology age, and, and they live with technology, uh, we've even visited some schools where this is being done. It's amazing to watch how engaged students are when they're on a computer. Uh, and there's so many neat things that you can do in terms of instruction with a computer that uh, I think that it's going to incre increase our student performance, uh, make students more engaged. Uh, they find that it even uh, decreases discipline referrals um, and, so, and attendance, increases attendance. So I think this is something uh, that we're really excited about moving forward on. Uh, again, we would start out with a high school. We were going to start out with one class. We found out that because at the high school those classes are mixed, we have freshmen with sophomores and juniors and they're all mixed together in many different classes, we decided we were going to just go ahead and do it to the whole high school at once. So we'll be providing training for our teachers over the next year or so and then start that in 2014.